Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Battleship New Jersey has some of the most advanced anti-aircraft weaponry of the Second World War. She benefited from several years of wartime experience. However, the battleships at Pearl Harbor did not. They still featured early war anti-aircraft weaponry and their performance was far below what a prepared, radar-equipped, and modern anti-aircraft weapons equipped battleship later in the war could accomplish. So let's look at the weapons that they had. On the small end was the 50 caliber machine gun. You might have seen New Jersey's 50 cals when you came on board. That is the air-cooled model. The Pearl Harbor battleships used a water-cooled model. This had a water line run to it and the water sleeve around the barrel kept the barrel from heating up so you could fire longer bursts. 50 caliber had a range of under a mile and the projectile was a little light for stopping modern aircraft. Nonetheless, these weapons were some of the first that were able to be brought into action, uh, and some of them were even brought into action by people who weren't trained on the weapon system, such as the steward's mate, Doris Miller, who was able to use one of the battleship West Virginia's 50 cals with zero training. Most heavy ships, the cruisers, battleships, and carriers were supposed to have eight 50 caliber machine guns, although some had around a dozen. This is far below the nearly 50 light anti-aircraft guns that Battleship New Jersey had, and the stopping power of the 50 cal is significantly less than the 20 millimeters that New Jersey used instead. By about February of 1942, this weapon system will have been completely phased out and replaced with 20 millimeters. In the medium roll, the 1.1 inch anti-aircraft gun, which was a quadruple barreled system, was the most modern American produced weapon. Uh, this filled the role that New Jersey would use the Bofors Quad 44. This earlier gun was slightly smaller than the Bofors and uh, weighed less, but it was a mechanically complex system that was slow to produce. While all of the large ships, the cruisers, battleships, and carriers were supposed to have four of these weapon systems, very few had actually had them retrofitted. And as far as I know, only the battleship Maryland had two of her four outfitted. None of the other battleships had any. Uh, this weapon system would be used for the first year or so of the war, but uh, the gunners tended to keep a ball-peen hammer on hand because it jammed so frequently. Um, and so it was replaced with the much more effective Bofors by the time New Jersey was placed into commission. Battleships that didn't have the 1.1s installed were supposed to have a 3-inch 50 installed. The 3-inch 50 was a decent weapon. Um, in fact, it would replace the Bofors mounts post-war because it had so much more stopping power. However, at Pearl Harbor, these weapons did not have veritably timed fuses. You had to set the fuse uh, prior to loading the weapon. And many of the ships that had them didn't have directors for them, so it was an optical thing, uh, aiming the weapon. This involves a lot of mathematics, calculating where you want the shell to explode forward of a target. Uh, again, the battleships would have had four of these mounts assigned, but some battleships didn't even have these. For example, Arizona famously had all four of her medium-sized anti-aircraft gun tubs completely empty. Although some models you see of the ship include three-inch guns, she didn't actually carry any at the time of the attack. On the heavy end, the battleships were armed with five-inch, 25-caliber dual-purpose guns. They, would each, they were each supposed to have eight of these broadsides of four each, so they could make small barrages. This gun was an excellent anti-aircraft weapon, and they did have directors, however, an earlier version than the radar-guided Mark 37s that the Iowas have. But the ammunition for these weapons was stored in magazines, so especially early on in the battle, it was very difficult to get these. And while these weapons would normally be the first line of defense, stopping aircraft from a distance, uh, by the time they were brought into action, the aircraft were directly overhead. 
early on, many of the battleships were only able to get at their star shell magazines. So they were basically firing fireworks at the Japanese aircraft. And later in the fight, when these weapon systems were brought online, um, improperly set timing fuses in the projectiles caused them to not explode in midair, but crash down on Pearl City and Honolulu and explode among the civilian population there. The Japanese weren't really targeting civilian populations. Uh, they, they were targeting the military bases. So the bulk of the 60 or so uh, civilians killed during the attack were actually killed by American anti-aircraft fire that had been misfused. The 5-inch 25s were carried in addition to 5-inch 51s, which were the secondary batteries of the battleships for anti-surface weapons. The new weapon system, the 5-inch 38, was just being rolled out to the fleet at this point, um, and it would do the role of both so that you had basically twice as many barrels. Some of the light cruisers in port had these weapon systems, and most of the ships there would be retrofitted with these systems later. A 5-inch 38 pedestal mount could replace a 5-inch 25 open mount pretty easily, um, but most of the ships would even receive twin turrets uh, with the 5-inch guns in, in enclosed mounts prior to the end of the war. Thanks for watching. If you like the content we're creating and are interested in seeing more like this, Remember to like, share, and subscribe. We put out new content multiple times a week. In particular, all this week, we're putting out content relating to Pearl Harbor. If you'd like to support the museum and our YouTube channel, there's a link below to our GoFundMe campaign. Any donation you make there helps us produce more content. Thanks for watching.